I'm gonna attempt to collect 30 million pounds of trash from this river all by myself. But there's a catch, because Mr. Beast and his boys and a butt ton of volunteers are gonna try and beat me to it by collecting 30 million pounds of trash from this beach. Now I know what you're thinking. Psh, Mark, one versus a thousand hardly seems like a fair fight. And you'd be right, except for one minor detail I neglected to mention. I actually do have one other teammate who just so happens to be a floating 50 ton trash eating robot. You gotta play to your strengths, right? Alright dude, you ready to start this competition? Dude, we've been going, look at all these people! What? Go, 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 you started already! So with the trash picking competition officially underway, while Mr. Beast and his crew perform manual labor like a bunch of lame humans, all the trash stuff is blowing on me. All me and my autonomous robot had to do was wait. And we didn't have to wait long. I love the idea of Jimmy getting all sweaty on the beach, picking up trash the old fashioned way, while I just let it all come to me. We got some eggs, looks like a go-gurt. Oh, what do we got here? This is a cola reel. Come on, man, this isn't even open. So Jimmy and his crew got off to an early lead, and I can confidently say that's thanks to their premature start and not their trash collection techniques. Jimmy! Yeah? The ocean's putting more trash on the beach. But by this point, my robot had also started firing on all cylinders and was closing the gap, which makes this the perfect time to explain exactly how it works. And to do that, let's go back in time a few days to when I first showed up here. Hey, what's up, boy? Welcome. Thank you. Welcome on the Interceptor. Nice place you got here. That is Boyan Slat. He's the reason this robot exists, and his origin story for caring about trash in the ocean comes from something that happened to him more than a decade ago. When I was 16 years old, I went scuba diving in Greece, and I looked around me, and I just saw more plastic bags than fish. And I was just so disappointed by that, that I thought, why can't we just clean this up? That kind of started a few things for me. Which is a humble way of saying it led him to founding a non-profit organization called the Ocean Cleanup with the audacious goal to rid the ocean of all trash and plastic. So naturally that involves removing trash directly from the ocean itself. But if you think about it, that's only half the problem. Because to make a lasting impact, you've also got to cut the pollution off at the source and turn the spigot off. And as it turns out, 80% of the plastic flowing to the ocean from rivers comes from just 1% of the rivers. So their idea is to put these trash eating robots on those worst offending rivers, and that will go a long way to fixing the problem at the source. So that's the strategy behind these. Now to the juicy part to how these river interceptor robots actually work. So step one is to anchor it near the bank of the river, and then as trash floats down the river, it runs into this barrier on the surface of the water, which shepherds the trash towards the mouth of the thing. And then once the trash is funneled in, it travels up this conveyor belt, after which it's dropped in one of these six floating dumpsters. And the fact that they float is really clever, because it means once they're full, the interceptor can stay put, while the dumpsters are flotilla down the river, where whatever can be recycled is recycled, and the rest is properly disposed of using the local waste management system. On top of that, it's got solar panels and a rainwater collection system, so it's fully off the grid. And thanks to some onboard AI technology, the trash collection happens essentially autonomously. And importantly, it's Boyan's nonprofit that provides the interceptor, but it's the local government and communities that implement, operate, and maintain it. This one is in the Dominican Republic, and it's run locally by their naval officers, who are just incredibly lovely to work with, by the way. Oh, and as a final point, that floating barrier sticks only one and a half feet deep into the water, which means while the trash gets captured on the surface, the fish can swim back and forth under it all day long. Or as Boyan puts it, It's very good at catching plastic, it's terrible at catching fish. Unless... You're a dead fish, <laughs> then it'll catch you. If you're already dead and filled with gas, right. you will be caught. Then yeah. you will be caught. So by this point, Jimmy and the boys had an ever-growing pile of trash. The pile's looking pretty nice. If I was you, I'd be getting a little nervous. I'm a, I'm a wee bit nervous. But the good news was that thanks to the steady consistency of my robot, I had now overtaken them as the leader in the amount of trash collected. But even better was that while they continued to labor away in the hot sun, I just left mine on autopilot and took the opportunity to go and 
enjoy the natural beauty of the Dominican beaches and make friends and hang out with some of the locals and even have this amazing Disney princess of a moment. And while I don't speak manatee, I think she was coming to say thank you on behalf of all the ocean creatures for us doing our part to keep the trash out of their home. And after that, my curiosity got the best of me, so I went to check out their progress firsthand. And after a brief display of dominance, keep it up, boys, keep it up. You wanna come help us? I'm picking up trash right now. Look at that, a oh cushion, a couch cushion. This is a live feed of what's going on right now. There's a lot of couches in the ocean. That's like eight of my shovels a second. Yeah. Back to work. Uh. I eventually helped them out because I'm such a nice guy. Even going as far as to offer to place their hard-earned trash definitely in their own pile for them, so it counts towards their total and not mine. So as the sun set over the city, I made some new friends who, after I introduced myself, kept pronouncing my name as Gringo for some reason. And right there behind me, you could see the robot was just powering on because that's what robots do. Collecting trash for me through the night so I continued to add to my totals even while I slept. The next day started out nice, but then rained hard for a few hours, which increased the trash in the river quite a bit. In fact, they told me after a heavy rain, all six dumpsters can get filled in a single day, which seemed just crazy easy to me. So when I asked where all the trash was coming from, we took a trip up the river and before long, the source of the trash became pretty obvious. Anytime we saw a canal like this meant to carry rainwater to the river, and there were a lot of them, it would be filled with trash that washes down from the communities near the river. And even worse, you could see sometimes how people would throw trash off the side of a cliff down to the river as an improvised trash dump. And part of me felt really frustrated by this until we parked the boat and actually visited one of these communities. And out of the gate, I saw a soccer ball and tried to showcase some of my moves, but after they put me in my place, I knew my only recourse was to go full Sammy Sosa on them. Oh! But as we walked around and talked with them, it became apparent pretty quickly the trash ends up in the river because there are no other options. You and I have the luxury of putting our trash in a bin and rolling it out to the curb, and then it's magically empty by the end of the day. In the developed cities in the Dominican Republic, this is of course how it also works. But in these remote poor communities, there are a lot of challenges that prevent this, such as just not being accessible by big trash trucks, which means they just don't have somewhere to put their waste. So whatever doesn't make it to the river, just piles up in their own village. And in talking with the leaders in these communities, it's clear they're passionate about being part of the solution. And the Dominican government, in conjunction with the UN, is proactively working together with their own people to come up with custom long-term solutions and be an example to the rest of the world. The point is, everyone involved here knows that Interceptor is not intended to be the permanent fix. Ultimately, we want to help ourselves out of business, and the sooner the better. There will come a day that we can just get rid of these Interceptors, and there's no more plastic coming, coming down these rivers. But until that day comes, we need to stop it from going into the ocean. In the end, by the time I wrapped up my work at the Interceptor, we ended up making two trips with the dumpsters down the river so the waste could be properly disposed of. Even though I basically did no manual labor to make this happen, there's still like a sense of pride here for some reason. I don't know. We did it. So after getting the total weight recorded, all that was left to do now was to meet back up with Jimmy. Wow, this is a certified butt ton right here. How much did you get? I got it right here. How much did you get? It's on my paper. I'm not showing you. you. Spoiler alert, it's much, much less than 30 million pounds. Okay, so before we show you our papers here and reveal who won man versus machine, if you're watching this video, we need your help to get this.